Jamia. the vice chancellor of Gombe State University, Professor Ali Usman El Nafati. Uh, next, uh, may I invite the HOD Religious Department, Religious Studies Department, Dr. Fatima Abubakar, to come and give us a citation of the inaugural lecturer, while the inaugural lecturer himself will be standing by her side so that while she delivers the citation. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Vice Chancellor of Gombe State University, the Deputy Vice Chancellors, the Provost, the Deans and HOD, the Deans and Directors present, the invited guests, all principal officers, all head of departments, my dear colleagues, and my dear students, good evening. I stand before you today to read the citation of Professor Rashid Abdul Ghani. Professor Rashid Abdul Ghani, born in Jos on the 17th October 1977. Professor Rashid Abdul Ghani attended Township Primary School Jos between 1983 and 1989 and El Kanemi College just between 1990 and 1996. He obtained his BA from the prestigious Islamic University in Medina in 2001, MA from University of Jos in 2005, and PhD from Usman Odanfodio University, Sokoto, in 2011. Professor Abdul Ghani started his academic career at Edu Rufai College for Legal and Islamic Studies, Misau, in 2006. In 2007, he joined Gombe State University as assistant lecturer in the Department of Religious Studies. In 2010, he was promoted to the rank of lecturer two. After completion of PhD in 2011, his rank was adjusted to the rank of lecturer one. In 2014, he was promoted to the rank of senior lecturer. 
He became a reader in 2017. At 43, Professor Rashid Abdul Ghani joined the professorial cycle in 2020. With this promotion, he became the first resident professor in the Islamic Studies Unit of the Department of Religious Studies from the State University. And the second resident professor in the department. Professor Abdul Ghani held various positions and meticulously served in various committees and panels since 2008. At the departmental level, he served as the chairman, guidance and counseling committee 2008 to 2013, 400 level coordinator 2008 to 2013, assistant examination officer 2009 to 2010. Overseer of the Department, 2014 to 2016. Chairman, Departmental Committee on Promotion, 2016 to 2020. Head of Department, 2016 to 2020. Editor-in-Chief, Voyages, Journal of Religious Studies, 2022 to date. Chairman, Research Implementation Committee, and Research Implementation Committee, 2023, Accreditation Committee, January 2023 to date. At the faculty level, Professor Abdul Ghani served as the Assistant Faculty Examination Officer, 2008 to 2010. Faculty Examination Officer, 2010 to 2016. Member, Faculty Examination Committee, 2010 to 2016. Member, Timetable Committee, 2010 to 2016. Member Examination Malpractice Committee 2010 to 2020, and Member PG Examination Misconduct Committee, Faculty of Art and Social Sciences 2019 to 2020. While at the university level, Professor Abdul Ghani served as a member Student Disciplinary Committee 2010 to 2016, Member Joint Council Senate Committee on Vice Chancellor's Search Team 2014. Member Senate Committee on Establishment of Consultancy Services 2015, Coordinate to University Space slash Central Timetable Committee 2014 to date, Chairman Investigation Committee on Alleged Examination Leakage, Directorate of Human Resource Development 2016 to 2017 Academic Session, Chairman Examination Misconduct Committee, Director of Human Resource Development 2016, 2017, and 2017 to 2018 Academic Session. Convener, ASU Student Relations 2018 till date. Deputy Chairman, Lecture Room Allocation and Timetable Committee 2019 to date. Member, Gombe State University Senate Committee to investigate an alleged case of change of examination result, March 2019. Chairman, Examination Misconduct Committee, Directorate of General Studies, 2019 to 2020. Member, Joint Senate Council Committee on the Selection of New Vice Chancellor for Gombe State University, October 2019. Director, Academic Planning, Gombe State University, 2020 to date. Member, University State Development Committee, 2020 to date. University Staff Development Committee, 2020 to date, Senate Representative to the University Council, January 2021 to date, Member University Development Committee, August 2020 to date, Member University Management Committee, 2022 to date, Member Library Development Committee, 2020 to date, and Member Senate Business Committee, 2022 to date. In addition to that, Professor Abdul Ghani is an external examiner to a number of institutions. Professor Ghani won Tate Fund grants to attend national and international conferences and workshops, such as one, travel grant to attend case method workshop on learning, teaching, and writing, organized by International Research Conference, IRC Dubai 2014. Trapness. Uh, number two, travel grant to present a paper at the first in Had International Muzakara and Conference on Hadith held at Hadith Research Institute, Kuala Lumpur, 2016. Number three, travel grant to present a paper at the International Conference on Zakat, Tax, Work of, and Economic Development organized by Islamic Business School, University Uttara, Malaysia, 2019. 
Professor Abdul Ghani holds membership of the Nigerian Association of Teachers of Arabic and Islamic Studies, Natais, and Nigerian University Scholars in Religions, Nusrel. Professor Abdul Ghani is a presenter of weekly Islamic programs in a number of indigenous and foreign media, such as Sunnah TV, NTA Gombe, GM TV, and Vision FM Gombe. Besides, Besides that, he is the Deputy Chief Imam, Gombe State University, Masjid, and Director slash Chief Imam, Ibadur Rahman Islamic Center, Gombe. Professor Rashid Abdul Ghani is happily married with children. Thank you very much, and I wish Professor Abdul Ghani a successful presentation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fatima Aubaka citation on Professor Rashid Abdul Ghanim. Now, I think it's my honor. Hello? It's, my, it's now my honor and privilege to invite Professor Rashid Abdul Ghanim to present his lecture. Thank you, Prof. You're welcome. The Vice Chancellor, members of the Governing Council, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Administration, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic in Absential, the Registrar, the University Librarian, the Bursa, Provost, Deans, especially the Dean of Faculty of Art and Social Sciences, the Directors, Professors, and other members of the University Senate, Heads of Department, especially the Head of Department of Religious Studies, other academic, administrative, and technical staff of the university, religious leaders, notably Sheikh Usman Isa Taliawa and Sheikh Qadi Babaliman, presently with us here, representatives of Muslim organizations, traditional title holders in our midst, especially the Oba of Yoruba Gombe. My dear mother, uncles, brothers and sisters, my lovely wives and children, distinguished invited guests, gentlemen and ladies of the press, esteemed ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah the Almighty for this exclusive opportunity to present the fifth inaugural lecture of the Gombe State University series, the second in religious studies, the first in Islamic studies, and also the first in Hadith in the history of Nigerian university system. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor Sir, Islamic studies as a field of study in academia encompasses numerous areas of speciality. Various universities around the world award degrees of different levels based on specific area of specialization. One of these areas is Hadith studies slash Hadith sciences, which I have chosen to be my focal point in the academic arena. The journey began since my secondary school days, when I came into contact with some works of Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani, rahimahullahu ta'ala, and successive interactions with Sheikh Muhammad Sani Riji al my admission into the prestigious Islamic University of Medina to study Hadith 
from the fountain head, from its fountain head at the undergraduate level and subsequent interaction with many scholars at the postgraduate level enriched my knowledge about hadith and also gave me the opportunity to deepen my awareness in this field. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, from the journey so far, I have discovered that in hadith, there are unlimited solutions to the multidimensional challenges facing humanity in the cosmos today. Conducting academic research in the hadith with a view to identifying divine solutions via prophetic guidance will definitely go a long way in addressing global problems if adequately implemented. Allah the Almighty created man for the purpose of worshiping him alone. He provides a conducive environment for man to attain this goal and enjoy his stay on earth. But due to limitations in human reasoning, man on his own cannot adequately identify all what is beneficial or harmful. The Almighty therefore sent his messengers and prophets to explain to mankind the guidelines for human enjoyment as contained in his revealed books. For the Quran, the detailed explanation made by the Prophet وسلم, through his speeches, actions, and tacit approvals is called Hadith. Hadith is the second source of Islamic law, knowledge, and civilization after the Quran. Detailed explanation of the Quran is found in the Hadith as earlier mentioned. And therefore, Islam cannot be understood without the Hadith. Mr. Vice Chancellor, this is a very important point. Some people are of the habit saying we only rely on the Quran, we need no Hadith. Actually, they can never practice Islam as sent by Allah. Muslims, in many injunctions of the Quran, are commanded to obey the Prophet وسلم, and accept his teachings. In fact, no one shall be a perfect believer until he unconditionally surrenders himself to the judgment of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا From the historical viewpoint of the development, Vice Chancellor Sa, considering the high position of hadith in Islamic discourse, Early Muslim scholars since inception have developed various means of authenticating whatever has been attributed to the Prophet وسلم, with a view to safeguarding his message from foreign interceptions and fabrications. During the lifetime of Rasulullah وسلم, his companions would meet him physically to confirm any doubtful statement or decision attributed to him. Some of them were also documenting his ahadith. These documents were later known as suhuf. The exercise continued to the following generation, that is the generation of the tabi'un, in addition to keeping records of critical assessment of hadith narrators. It is important to note that assessing the critical, I mean critical assessment of narrators started earlier in order to safeguard the tradition. In the third century of Hijra, 
The science of Hadith witnessed its golden age. Great scholars of Hadith emerged in this era, which led to the rapid growth of Hadith compilation and the publication of exclusive books on principles of Hadith sciences, known as Mustalahul Hadith. These scholars founded many areas of research in Hadith sciences, especially in the aspect of validation of Hadith and critical assessment of its narrators. Certain criteria were set to evaluate and determine reliable reporters of Hadith. This exercise is known as Ilmul Jahi wa Ta'deel. Among the renowned scholars of this era we are Al Imam al Bukhari and Imam al Muslim, the authors of the famous books of Hadith, Sahih al Bukhari and Sahih al Muslim, respectively. Looking at the nature of research in Hadith studies, it is paramount to note that each Hadith is made up of two integral components which form the focus of research in Hadith studies as follows. The first component, component is the Isnad, which refers to the chain of narrators connecting each generation, transmitting the Hadith to the other. The aim of research in the Isnad is to investigate the authenticity of information through laid down techniques. Scholars stipulated five basic conditions for authenticating any hadith. These conditions are the chain of the narrators must be well connected. Each generation or each student must have met the person he's reporting for, from and this continues up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This connectivity must start from the author of a book up to the companion attributing the information to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The second condition, the narrators must be reliable persons with high level of integrity. Third, the narrators must have sound and retentive memory that will guarantee the accuracy of their narrations. Fourthly, the hadith must be free from discrepancies and irregularities. And lastly, it must always be also be free from hidden defects and conspicuous errors. The second component is the matin, which refers to the actual text. That is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Research regarding the text is one of the challenges, so to mention, sir, in our country today. Many people read the text of Hadith without having the necessary technic techniques to understand its context, and this led to a lot of confusion, in fact, to insurgency in some aspects. Therefore, I submit that the researcher is required to adequately comprehend the Hadith text with view to applying the content in addressing specific issues. Hence, there is need to follow the following steps. One, the researcher must study the vocabularies of the hadith by consulting relevant books of hadith vocabulary. Vice Chancellor, sir, it's quite unfortunate that in Nigeria today, we find people speaking to the world about the hadith using Arabic dictionary to interpret a hadith. They, they, they mislead people and they got misled. That is why I say 
relying on general Arabic dictionaries alone is absolutely wrong in this regard. Number two, the researcher is expected to consult various books of Hadith commentary to properly understand the content of the Hadith in question. It is much helpful to consult, and I suggest or recommend, to consult at least three different commentaries from classical and contemporary Muslim scholars. The researcher must also be acquainted with the circumstances surrounding the narration of the hadith, known as Asbabu Wurud al Hadith. Undoubtedly, knowing the instance in which the Prophet وسلم, made a statement enables the researcher to understand and properly apply the hadith to the present situation. The researcher is also requested to collect relevant or related ahadith on the subject matter. This will help him to widen his understanding of the hadith. This is because detailed, of, detailed and additional information of a hadith may be found in other ahadith. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my little contributions towards academicizing the hadith. Esteemed Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to emphasize at this pivotal moment that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a source of mercy, not solely for humanity, but for all beings that inhabit the heart, the earth. The Almighty Allah declares, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Meaning, and we have not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the world. His mission was basically to relieve man of burden and enable him attain success here and in the hereafter. His message can truly be described as a solution to human multidimensional challenges. Details of his prescribed solutions are presented in the treasure of wisdom and knowledge, and that is the Hadith. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, since academic research is all about preferring solutions to human needs, I strongly believe that using the Hadith as a manual of academic research across all disciplines will present to the world an effective and reliable remedy. Hence, I embark on my mission of academicizing the Hadith with a view to contributing my quota in addressing human multidimensional challenges. So far, Mr. Vice Chancellor, in my research, I have applied the Hadith to address issues on health, economy, banking, peace and security matters, endowment, and basics of Islamic research. For the purpose of this presentation, I have selected only two areas, and that is health and security as my focal points. Hadith and health matters. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in the light of the prophetic hadith which says, Ma anzal Allahu da'an illa qad anzal lahu shifa'a alimahu man alimahu wa jahilahu man jahila. Meaning, Allah had never sent down a disease except that he has sent down a cure for it. Some people will know the cure, while others will know not. Therefore, Muslims consider scientific research in health-related matters necessary in human society. In addressing the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic, 
via my area of interest, that is Hadith research, I found that the causes of pandemics can be classified into two broad categories. The first is the physical causes, which can be explained scientifically in accordance with the law of nature, while the second category is the metaphysical causes that can only be explained by religious interpretation of events. In the hadith, the Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, affirmed on several occasions that whenever indecent acts such as fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, and public display of nudity become the order of the day in people's lifestyle, the aftermath shall be the outbreak of pandemics and novel diseases that the previous nations never experienced. In order to control infectious diseases and prevent the spread of pandemics, since 1,400 years ago, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has presented to the world numerous preventive measures. We all heard about washing our hands, social distancing, isolation, and other. All these were mentioned categorically in the ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam based on my findings. I therefore submit that until researchers acknowledge the necessity of tracing the root cause of pandemics and its preventive measures via reasoning, which is science, and revelation, which is divine text, the problem will remain unaddressed to the desired degree. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, on the issue of security, under the guidance of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that says, Man asbaha minkum aminan fi sarbi. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever amongst you wakes up in a secure environment, having a good health and processes his daily bread, then he's like being given the entire worldly enjoyment. Based on this hadith, I submit that security is the bedrock of every society. The first need of man on earth is security, followed by other needs. In addressing the security challenges that engulfed our dear region, Northeastern Nigeria, a couple of years ago, I examined the prophecy of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on insurgent group of youths, Khawarij, that will emerge and become a threat to security in the name of religion. In a number of ahadith, based on my research, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam described the Khawarij sect as a group of young people with myopic thinking that will emerge at the end of time. Their misconception about faith, that is Iman, due to erroneous interpretations of some Quranic texts, especially the Quran and the Hadith, this led them to bloodly activities. For this reason, I recommend that the raided sects be combated not only with military force, but also with deliberate and well-articulated intellectual cum ideological counter narratives to disabuse and de-radicalize the mindset of its existing as well as prospective members.
my vision on academicizing the Hadith. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, my engagement in the study of Hadith over the years has proven to me the resourcefulness of Hadith in academic discourse and the need to extend its scope in the Nigerian university system. The NUC in its BMAS and the recent CCMAS provided a few number of courses on Hadith for students of Islamic studies. These courses are never, and I repeat, these courses are never enough to produce graduates with adequate knowledge and skills to conduct academic research in Hadith. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I therefore strongly advocate for specialization in Hadith sciences right from undergraduate level. In some African as well as Canadian university, very interesting to know. They award degrees BSc in witchcraft. BSc in witchcraft. If these universities will do this because they feel they need it, I see no reason why we cannot make a case for BA Hadith studies in the great city of Bubayeru. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I made some recommendations. In order to produce well grounded Islamic scholars, who can favorably compete in the academic arena globally, I wish to recommend that one, the general BA Islamic Studies program that is offered in Nigerian University should be embundled at least into five distinct programs as follows. One, BA Quranic Studies. Two, BA Hadith Studies, three, BA Islamic Jurisprudence and its Principles, four, BA Islamic History and Civilizations, and fifth, BA Islamic Creed and Theology. <laughs> this will enable the students to have focus in their areas of speciality and not to be referred to as jacks of all trades, masters of none. <laughs> My second recommendation, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I recommend that an Arabic medium option, an Arabic medium option, having students that will study Islamic studies with Arabic, I mean, they use Arabic language to communicate. I recommend an Arabic medium option for interested students of specialized Islamic studies degrees programs in Nigerian universities. This should be introduced. A student with Arabic proficiency has unlimited chances to excel in all areas of Islamic scholarship. Conclusively, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I wish to state that the resourcefulness of hadith in academic research is marvelous. Hundreds of hadith books and sources contain unquantifiable provisions for human needs. Unbundling the Islamic studies program into different areas of specialization in our universities will certainly afford potential scholars the opportunity to excel in their choosing career. And I wish to say, Mr. Vice Chancellor, I would love to see the Gwambawas Devon Party to start this program. This goal of having scholars this goal will be better achieved by making provisions 
for Arabic medium option for students of Islamic discipline. Mr. Vice Chancellor, based on my personal research and contacts, I discovered that large number of students going for BA Arabic in Nigerian University is because they don't have the option to study Islamic studies in Arabic. <laughs> Researchers in all disciplines are also encouraged to explore the Hadith treasure in addressing the multidimensional challenges facing man as Allah's vicegerent on earth. Acknowledgement. I thank Allah, the all-knower, the all-wise, for his countless favor on me and my parents. He guided me to the right path and chose me to serve his deen and the sunnah of his beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this capacity my profound gratitude goes to my dear parents late alaji abdul ghani abdul salam and haji azulaifa to yusuf for their love kindness and adequate care before and after i came to this world my father who was so curious to see a day like this when his own son will be delivering a professorial inaugural lecture is no more father if not for death you will have made this event more colorful but the all wise knows better why it happened this way however my sincere dua for you now and always is for Allah to grant you Jannatul Firdaus. My amiable mother, Atoke Omababa Latusi. That traveled down to this place just to witness this event. Mother, you sacrifice all you could to see me succeed in life even when the challenges of life almost pulled me down you stood by my side and gave me the moral and financial support needed to keep me moving forward may Allah reward you with the best of rewards I always pray for you and my father my sincere appreciation goes to the Vice Chancellor, Gombe State University, Professor Aliu Osman El Lafati, for the opportunity he has given me that enabled me to stand here today. Sir, I thank you for making me part of your administration and for the support I receive from you in discharging my responsibilities as your appointed director of academic planning. Sir, I would like to use this medium to congratulate, to congratulate you and the fifth council of our great institution for making history as the first university to produce a professor of Hadith Sciences in Northeastern Nigeria. And the third in the history of Nigerian University. The first person was promoted to the rank of professor in Usman Danfodio University, Sokoto Professor Mansur Ibrahim. And the second one, University of Elorin, that is Professor Imam Ali Aga, in 2017-2019, respectively, and the Little Rashid in 2020. <laughs> My Vice Chancellor, sir, may Allah reward you in abundance and grant you a successful and joyful completion of your tenure. I also extend my sincere appreciation to the pioneer vice chancellor of Gombe State University, Professor 
Abdullahi Mahdi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. I appreciate his successor, Professor I M Umar. I appreciate the chairman of pre-convocation and professorial inaugural lecture, a father indeed, Professor Muhammad Guramaduku, and the entire members of the university community for the respect, affection, concern, and cooperation I receive from you all. May Allah the Almighty forgive Professor Abdullah Mahdi. May he crown all our efforts with great success now and forever. I remain grateful indeed to my friends and brothers in Islam, especially Dr. Dahiru Inwa Ibrahim and Dr. Omar Garbado Kaji, who were instrumental to my coming to Gombe State University. Marlon Dairo called me, I think, more than probably 17 times on fall call that he wants me to join this family. May Allah Ta'ala reward them. They also made me feel at home despite the distance from my biological relatives. The Arab will say, Rubba akhil laka lam talidhu ummuk. A brother of yours may come from a different mother. May Allah count all my righteous acts part of their good deeds. I cannot forget to appreciate all my teachers and mentors under whom I passed through to attain this level. I also express my deep appreciation to all my esteemed uncles, brothers, and sisters for invaluable support and sacrifices. I cannot thank you enough, but I will forever remain grateful to you. Jazakumullahu khairan. My dear wives and children, I thank you for your love, care, concern, and prayers. I sincerely appreciate you all for being considerate. I have not been giving you the time and attention you deserve due to the time-consuming nature of academia. May Allah bless us to reap the fruits of our labor here and in the hereafter. I thank you all for listening. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم Thank you.